Hello and welcome to Sermon Link. I'm Pastor Larry Brown and this is a ministry of Powell United Methodist Church and welcome as we dive into the Gospel of Luke today and reflect on the passage that we find in this 14th chapter. Let me begin with the reading. On one occasion when Jesus was going to the house of a leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal on the Sabbath, they were watching him closely. When he noticed how the guests chose the places of honor, he told them a parable. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit at the place of honor in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host. And the host who invited both of you may come and say to you, give this person your place. And then in disgrace, you would start to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, Go and sit down at the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he may say to you, Friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. He said also to the one who had invited him, When you give a luncheon or a dinner, Do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors in case they may invite you in return and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind. And you will be blessed because they cannot repay you for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. So, our reading there in chapter 14 uh, sets the stage right with that first verse. It says, Jesus has gone to the home of a Pharisee to share a meal, and he says, the gospel writer, they were watching him closely. This is the context of this portion of Jesus' life as it's highlighted in Luke's gospel. Tension is mounting, conflict is growing. Uh, Those who are in authority, religiously speaking particularly, are watching him and they are suspicious of him, they are threatened by him. And as we learn in other places in the gospel, they are looking for opportunity to trip him up or to catch him in some way that will stop his ministry or quiet uh, the kind of subversion that they believe he is uh, attempting to bring on within the parameters of what is the traditional religious community. So it starts with that conflict. And in fact, it might leave us asking the question, why is Jesus at the home of a Pharisee in the first place? I mean, he must certainly know that when he goes to be close to where the Pharisees are, when he immerses himself in their world, he is opening up himself uh, to you know, threat and ridicule and as we ultimately know, um, even arrest and ultimately this crucifixion on the cross. So why would Jesus voluntarily put himself in these situations, in these contexts that are so troublesome for him potentially? The reason is because of what Jesus is called to do, and that is to usher in the kingdom of God. And so he's not afraid to do that, even in the most difficult of circumstances. In fact, it feels to me as if Jesus is particularly called to step right into the middle of the situations in the world which tend to deny the reality of God and what that reality of God means for us, that that's the kind of context in which he particularly wants to place himself so that he can open the eyes of the spiritually blind, that he can soften hard hearts, and that he can help those who are up to that point cut off from the reality of God begin to experience that. So Jesus is taking on his mission here by going to a meal in a Pharisee's house. And then the whole mealtime scene is very, very Uh, familiar to us when it comes to the way Jesus interacted with the world around him. Uh, First of all, the gospel tells us in many places that he ate and drank with sinners. Again, 
the intentionality of where he goes to bring God's reality to life. We know that um, often he would stop at the homes of those uh, along the road where he was traveling and share a meal with them. Mary and Martha uh, in the home of Lazarus is one example that comes to my mind. And then we're aware how, uh, particularly on the last night of his life, it was a meal, a sacred meal, a Passover meal that became then the occasion for him to connect his very presence with the act of breaking bread and the drinking of a cup. And that, of course, becomes now for us our Holy Communion, our sacrament. And then added to all of that is the references that we find in Scripture and in Jesus' teaching himself about the culmination of what God is doing throughout the process of creation, which involves then a what's described as a heavenly banquet in which we and so many others, all others we could say, are invited. So that image of the banquet uh, t- ties or connects deeply with the mission and reality uh, of Jesus. And so he takes another opportunity of a meal to make clear who God is for us and who we are with God. And he does this not so much by pointing out what are proper table table manners. Uh, It goes much deeper than that. He's saying that so often in our world we are wrapped up in my position, um, my place, uh, if I am in, you know, the right configuration with those around me so that I am particularly um, identified in in the way that I should be to recognize either my achievement, my accomplishment, or just who I am. And Jesus is saying all of that fades away when God's reality emerges in our lives. Our place is not determined by us. Our place is determined by God. In fact, who's invited to the banquet is not determined by us, who can be in or at the table or not. In fact, God invites all. And how do we know that? Because Jesus specifically names examples of those who in the culture and time in which he did his ministry were excluded. In fact, they were even considered to be non-existing beings. Uh, People looked past them and through them as if they were invisible. Of the wounded, um, the poor, uh, those who were blind, those who were in any way less than what they should be physically crippled, as he says here, or, or lame. Uh, so the wounded ones, the broken ones, the less than ones, those are who God particularly invites and makes clear they have a place at the table where God serves as the host. And what Jesus implies here is that you and I are involved in that same kind of business of inviting, of making room and space, of connecting with particularly those the world tends to forget about. In our congregation, we have a ministry that is growing, uh, emerging, if you will, around uh, connecting with folks who have been incarcerated and their families, particularly as those who are incarcerated are now returning into society. And it feels to me as if that kind of mission and ministry, and there are many other examples, but this is one of them, is a way of partnering with Jesus to be sure that at the table there's a place for those who maybe up until our ministry of compassion and care had no place uh, or were disenfranchised somehow from what God's about. So it's a a very um, important scripture because it it connects us to God and reminds us how God connects to us but it also connects us to each other and reminds us how God makes that connection possible as well and it all centers on this gracious open loving and welcoming inviting presence of the one who is the eternal host God our creator so just let that work on you. Uh, I'll do the same. And you know, see where that takes your thoughts and your actions this week. Uh, we appreciate you being with us. Hey, if you, if you like our sermon links each week, take a moment and share it. Click that share 
button and then let it be uh, posted out there through some of the folks you know to help us extend the word and give us a thumbs up. That always helps too. We really appreciate it. Thanks a lot, folks, and we'll see you next time on Sermon Link. Until then, uh, you take care and God bless. Have a great week.